there's been so many rivalries over the years. You look at sort of Taylor against Barney mm. or MVG against Wright when he was really in his pomp. Maybe been a bit of heat to the rivalries. Mm. Yourself and Luke, it's very, very different. You saw yesterday the, the fist pumps after the big finishes, the smiling going off at the break. Just talk me through the dynamic between yourself and, and Luke. Yeah, I just think we're two, I mean, I'm not as young as Luke, but we're two young lads, a, a sport where we're at the top of it. Kind of, you kind of can't not enjoy that, you know. It's, uh, we're, we're two players that just get along, we get along well, and we, we enjoy playing each other. It's always exciting for the fans when we do, and, you know, I just think that kind of thing, it allows you to relax and have fun, and, uh, you know, I know that the rivalries back in the day used to be more fierce and that, but I haven't got it in me. I don't, I don't want the, you know, the animosity. I just, you know, I don't think Luke does either. We just want to get along with our business and, and, and give the fans what they want a great game. So, uh, you know, of course, when we play each other, we want to beat each other more than ever. But, uh, you know, there is that, that um, element of enjoyment and, and respect between each other because we kind of come through at the same time. I know I was maybe four or five months before in winning what I was doing, but we're kind of coming through together at the same time. We're just looking at it like, this is great. You know, we hopefully keep <laughs> riding out for the next 10 years and uh, it'll be exciting. There's obviously been a lot of chat this year about the fact that you were so called overlooked mm. for the other Luke, um, but you sort of put that into place a little bit over the last few days. Does that mean, that, was it important for you to do that to sort of say, right, hey, hang on a minute, I am still here? Yeah, I mean, I don't see myself overlooked as much. I think that, but just because Luke's got a bigger following, um, he's a bigger media star than myself. He's going to get more headlines, more rights, which is, you know, it's going to happen, is it? He's going to have more people liking posts and commenting on posts because he's got more fans than I have. So, you know, I don't think in, in a proper dark fan's eyes or a proper a journalist's eyes I, I would be overlooked. I just think when you've got a bigger following, you're a bigger superstar than someone. Of course, it happens in all sports, but, you know, you see it in, in snooker, you know, Ronnie Sullivan's always going to be the star, no matter who wins the, the, the snooker world championship. So, that will be the same with darts now. I could probably win five world titles. Luke will still be the star, but rightly so. He, he's the biggest we've ever seen. So, uh, you know, I think I've said it in many interviews. I'm, I'm not really too fussed about it, to be honest. I'm just here to try and uh, battle out with Luke and have fun, and, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, have some great games over the next few years and probably many major finals as well. You know, I think the thing that will happen between me and Luke is I'll go on runs, he'll go on runs beating me. But at the moment, his standard has been really good, really, really what I was doing last year. So. You know, I wasn't at my best in the players, but in the final, I kind of was in the end, and uh, that's the most important thing, you peak at the right time. But the bookies make it kind of a two-horse race for the Worlds, with Anderson and MVG a little bit distant, mm. and no one else really, according to the bookies, have a chance of winning a world title. Do you see it that way? I don't see it that way. I can see why they, they price it that way. Of course, me and Luke have uh, been in the final last year. Our, our um, events of what we've done this year. Um, you know, Gary's always a threat. Michael's always a threat. Anybody outside that, you know, you have to create higher odds to, to want the punter to bet on it. But uh, anybody can win a world title, but it takes a different mentality to do it. Um, yeah. it's, it's hard to just go straight into to winning a world championship if you haven't won a major before because there's a lot of pressure on your shoulders. And I think I benefit from uh, all the major titles I had last year before I won the world. I think if I hadn't won all them, I don't think I'd have been world champion. So. Yeah. The kind of experience did help me, uh, but you know, Rob Cross did it, so it shows, it shows anybody can really do it. But of course, me and Luke are going to be in, going into it as the favourite. But whether we win it, I guess you have to find out. But you've also got the opportunity to be the first player to clinch two million in prize money. Is that something that's also on your mind? Obviously, another another record to break for yourself. Uh, not really. To be honest, I think uh, my goal is to be back-to-back -back world champion. If I am, then of course that goal comes with it, doesn't it? But. Um, yeah, the, the money is amazing in darts. It, it's been elevated massively, and that's the, the thanks to the like, likes of Barry and, and Eddie and, and Matt, you know, all of them. What they've done for the sport allows us to live comfortably for the rest of our lives. But uh, of course, when you when you're comfortable with money, you kind of don't worry about it anymore. You're kind of I'm more focused on winning TV titles and you know just winning as a whole. I, I kind of get more of a buzz from winning world championships than I would from winning half a million. You know, it's uh, it's kind of what I thrive on is, is winning titles. So. Uh, you know, everything else comes with it as, as an extra, but uh, yeah, I, I, I thrive on uh, being in these big major finals and winning, and that's what gives me the buzz. Um, you say the money's great in darts, but you and Luke have taken about two and a half million between you. You're not leaving much for everyone else. No, I just leave a few scrap. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, we've um, undoubtedly been the two top players this year. Um, I see a stat yeah, yesterday saying about how much we both picked up, and 17, 18, well, I think it's 17 titles between yeah. us, so. 
it's up to the other players to, to you know to, to get better maybe and, and match us they can there's so much great talent out there that it won't be long before you keep seeing more wage winners all the time we did this year there's a couple mm. new ones as well again and that will just keep happening every year but uh, you know when you're at the top of the sport you kind of set yourself a high level of you know you want to win a couple of majors a year and you know if I can keep doing that myself then obviously I'll overtake James and, and be the third most successful um, there's kind of a race between me and Lou who's going to be the first to yeah. 10 or 11 so you know I might never win another one again who knows yeah. you, you don't know so uh, I'd like to think I'll, I'll win many more in the future but uh, sport's in a great place you know it's going to get bigger and better and uh, you know it's just really nice to be at that forefront of it. Mm. Luke Little is one of the favourites to win sports personality and a darts player's never won that how big would that be for the sport? I think it'd another uh, feather in the cap for the sport isn't it you know it's uh, I kind of think that Keely Hodge is probably going to win it entry but I think Luke could at least win young sports personality player, uh, player what they call it young sports yeah. personality of the year so yeah. if he doesn't win the main one I'm sure he could win that one and that's still a nice thing to have for yourself but you know I've been invited myself so if I'm there I'll, I'll be there supporting. I was going to say wouldn't you feel you deserve to be in the running? Well of course yeah I think <laughs> the only thing I'd find is maybe over the last 12 months I don't see any other a UK British sports person that's kind of dominated a sport and, and mm. you know nearly won everything so I mean it's more done on personality in it so it's not about your achievements yeah. Um, so yeah I mean it doesn't doesn't bother me too much but uh, I'll go and I'll be sporting him and you know if he wins and it's good for the sport well, but it's you. nice to you know be invited I think they acknowledge it a little bit what I've achieved so. absolutely so they should a few pundits mentioned that Luke Lit was the only player with the mm. I asked the same question to MVG and he said that he doesn't necessarily think it's his on-board ability, but the media presence that he brings and the added fan base. Do you, do you somewhat agree with that or what's your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, of course, like when, when you're like a, a microphone going of the sport, you have got a fear factor, even if he's not his best, he, he has a fear factor because of what he's achieved. He's a, a big, big personality. Um, you know, I think at the moment there's, there's a few players, obviously, uh, Luke has got it. I think I've got it because you've seen a lot of people that are not at their best against me. You know, I think they, they just look like dirt last night. You kind of get close to that winning line, and he started tightening up and uh, give me an opportunity to go on and win the game. So, you know, Luke has got it in a way where if you're not you fall one down, it, it kind of looking like it's game over straight away. And, and Michael's got it because you know what he's capable of. So yeah, but there's other players that have got a fear factor as well. I don't think there's just uh, you know us three. I think there's a, there's a group of players that have that fear factor, but. In a way, I don't think the players really look into that fear factor situation because we can all beat each other and everyone could beat me, Luke and Michael and whoever. So, yeah, I, don't, I, I think that's a little bit cliche about that, to be honest. When you look back, what's the whole year been like as well, champion for the first time? It's been a whirlwind to us. I can't believe we're, you know, we're already around. You know, it's gone so quick and uh, you kind of lose track on you know all the things you've achieved and the amount of finals I've been involved in. So, you know, as I stand in now, it's, it's been a massive achievement for me this year. I think it's been a success. I'm really pleased with the way that I've handled myself being the world champion of the world number one. I've won two majors and World Cup and many other finals. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased the way it's gone. And you know, it'd be a lovely way. If, I mean, if I win the world this year, I think it'd be a better year this year than it was last year. Phil, Adrian, Gary have defended this. Obviously, you just said it, so you know that not even like Michael has managed to do this. What would it mean if you could go back to back? I think it would it would just be that absolute dream that I just think you you feel like you're never going to wake up from. It's just the it's when you're a one-time world champion, it's always amazing. But when you're a two-time champion, it, it kind of puts you up there in the, the higher elite of the, of the players that have played this sport. So, you know, it's always nice winning one, but to win a second, it uh, it really does put you up there in the legacy of the, the greatest players that's ever been. So, you know, this would be a great statement for myself to be two-time world champion before I'm 30, and uh, it's set a good precedent for me to go on and win a lot more in the future. But it's going to be tough. There's a lot of great players now, so I'm going to have to beat my best and, and play a lot better than I did like, you know, the weekend just gone. You can't fluke a world title, no. but is it important not just to be a one-time world champion in your eyes, now you have done it once? Yeah, you know, I've got many years to go, but when I'm in this form, when I'm winning these titles, when I'm at the top of my game, I feel like you, you want to take advantage of the, of, the, of the the way you're playing to go on and win more. And, uh, you know, the way I was playing at the back end of last year, it kind of would have been easy for me to just think I was going to win, but I thought... Winning major tournaments and then winning world championships, they're completely two different things to do. It's uh, so much harder. Um, I kind of didn't realise how hard it was, but it was. It was mentally challenging, but I rode my luck in moments, and maybe I might have to do that this year if I do win, but you just got to believe in yourself and 
the good thing for me is I'll take from that is I know how to do it. I've done it before and that does uh, help you out with experience. People are already sort of looking at the collision course between yourself and, and Luke Little in the, the semi-finals of the World Championship. Do you believe it? It could be possibly that simple that it, it is a, a fight out to the semi-final for yourself and Luke? Yeah, I mean definitely of course it's on everybody's lips. Everyone wants to watch us play against each other. It's usually a great game but uh, it's never a full foregone conclusion. You don't just make a, a semi-final in the world by ease. I think if you look at um, the draw brackets are not easy. You know, there's a couple of legends in my one, Barney and, and James Wade, and I think Mike Dedeck is in my half, maybe, and Stephen Van in, you know, so that's, that's to get to the semi. So, yeah, I'm not going to be doing it by luck. It's going to have to be by pure grit, determination, and good performances. And, uh, you know, I think Luke would be the same. Obviously, everyone wants to see it, of course, but, uh, you know, it's not as easy as, as, it, as it was this weekend just gone. I think Luke was the better player of the weekend, but I managed to play it my best at the right time. Hopefully I can do the same, you know, in the World Championships and we can go on that collision course and see a great game between us because it's always enjoyable.